Good afternoon, everyone. This is Josh Mindlin here at Shaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of Profitable Strategies for Earnings Season. Presenting today is Mark Shaken, founder and CEO of Shaken Analytics, who is known for developing the Shaken Power Gauge rating. Along with Mark is Carlton Neal, COO of Shaken Investments. Carlton spent 20 years working alongside market guru Marty Zweig at Zweig Mutual Funds. You are welcome to submit your questions throughout this webinar using the Zoom Q&A window, which is available in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to all registrants. To get us started off, here's Mark Chaikin. Thank you, Josh, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we're already just a week into earnings season, and we've seen some fireworks with the major banks last week with Netflix yesterday, uh, and we've got a very important tech report from LAM Research after the close tonight. And then the week ends with um, a Friday that's a little more busy than normal. Honeywell, Procter & Gamble, Schlumberger all reporting before the opening. So a little bit of an introduction. We've got a lot to cover and I wanna move briskly through. 50 years on Wall Street, 45 years using technical analysis in conjunction with fundamentals. Ran the options department at a regional firm called Tucker Anthony and RL Day. So for those of you who are using options in your advisor practice, we're familiar with that. We've incorporated uh, an options idea capability into Chaken Analytics from Options Play. Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors, just as Carlton has. Some are colleagues, some were clients at an institutional brokerage firm that we had. We sold that brokerage firm to Instanet in 1992, which was the electronic trading arm of Reuters. And then I founded something called Instanet Research, which was a six person quantitative research department within Instanet. The reason all this background is important is because everything I learned in a 45 year career on Wall Street culminated in the creation of a multi-factor quantitative model that I built in the aftermath of 2008 finalized in 2010 in September. We call it the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. It's the centerpiece of everything we do at Chaikin Analytics because it gives you a directional edge and particularly during earnings season. It's like a beacon that guides you in the right direction. So with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce my partner, uh, Carlton Neal, who joined us in January. Particularly happy to have Carlton on the webinar because he's using Chaikin Analytics to manage his own uh, retirement plan since he joined us in January and also because I've got the mother of all colds. So he's going to do the heavy lifting today. So with that, my partner, Carlton Neal. Hey, thanks, Mark. It's great to be on with everybody. Uh, as Josh mentioned at the top of the call, uh, I was mentored by Dr. Dr. Martin Zweig. Marty became a good friend over the years and I learned a lot from Marty. I've learned a lot from other people uh, as well. Clearly, being a mutual fund manager for the last 21 years, I think a lot of the advisors that are on the call can uh, certainly understand that the markets can be volatile. There's a lot of cross currents that are going on. Clearly, we're deep into a bull market here. Hopefully, we'll be able to garner some of the things that I've done in my own portfolio utilizing Chaikin Analytics and uh, everything that I've kind of learned along the way and why I think that the analytic product works extremely well for advisors in helping their clients find their way both through earnings seasons as we'll talk about today but even through full market cycles thank you carlton and um, in today's webinar we're going to look at five key steps to making money during earnings season shaken power gauge and our proprietary relative strength shaken money flow which many of you know on bloomberg and reuters and also on stockcharts.com going to show you something unique called Chaikin Power Bars, which enables us to rank sectors and industry groups, not by momentum, but by the fundamental potential of the stocks within those ETFs. And then how to find the strongest stocks in those ETFs. So for those of you who are creating active stock portfolios, um, this is a unique way to zero in on the strongest stocks based on which ETFs are performing well. And then finally, how to play good defense and avoid landmines, absolutely critical during earnings season, as you'll see in some of the examples. Now, we have a free bonus for everybody who's attending today. Josh has put the link in your uh, chat box. It's our new free earnings calendar where we combine the Chaikin Power Gauge rating with upcoming earnings reports. 
And it's really a way to take advantage of the ability of Chaikin to be a GPS during earnings season. So if you want to download that, uh, the link is right up there, chaikinanalytics.com slash Q3 calendar. And it's our uh, gift uh, as a way of saying thanks for taking an hour out of your day. Now, we'd like to start out with a question. Are you thinking about a bear market? We read a lot in the papers about that. And Josh has just put up a quick poll. So going into the fourth quarter, are you bullish, bearish, or neutral on the market? I know how Carlton and I are voting. Yeah, I did vote. I just voted right now, Mark. Here, I'll share the results with you. Uh, similar to what we've seen recently, Mark. So 62% bullish. 28% neutral, only 10% bearish. So that's actually the lowest number we've seen. Just one little interesting fact. Uh, we have one partner uh, who's um, a very well-known macro uh, analyst, and we did a webinar for his audience, which includes a lot of advisors. On that webinar, over 52% of the people were bearish. Now, this particular gentleman is bearish, and so are his analysts. And so it told me that our views on the market are very, very colored by the people we listen to and respect. What we're going to talk about here in this webinar is how you can have an independent voice whispering in your ear, the Chaikin Power Gauge rating objective, measure of a stock's potential, analyze ETFs that way as well. So uh, with the notion that most people in the room are bullish and certainly not bearish, it should be no surprise that this one-year chart of the SPY, the most actively traded instrument, which mirrors the S&P 500 index, is extraordinarily bullish. And we know that basically looking at two things, looking at the price action versus that channel and our volatility bands broke through that upper channel a week and a half ago. Very overbought normally means you rest for a bit. That's what's been happening. A bit of group rotation, some profit taking in the financials when they reported the major banks last week. But then look at check and money flow. Check and money flow measures institutional buying and selling. If an institution wants instant access to the equity market, where do they go? Well, they go first to the SPY and then they do their research and pair back their spider position while they replace it with individual stocks. Although a lot of people allocate, as you know, to SBY for their large cap equity performance. That's both good and bad. So this chart is telling me two things. A, we're high but going higher. So I was just quoted on CNBC 20 minutes ago saying we're digesting the advance, but we're going to finish the year on a very positive note. Check in money flow encourages me. Also the fact that you had a strong September followed up by almost no weakness in October. This, this, found a lot of the hedge funds uh, leaning the wrong way. They're sitting on the sidelines. They're going to have to get equity exposure by year, and it's going to be a powerful year. And third quarter earnings are going to help drive that. And to your point there, Mark, I know that uh, one of the adages that I always used with, uh, with Marty was beware the crowds at the extreme and sentiment, which is actually part of the model um, that you built, is you know an integral part of what happens to the market. And clearly, this has been one of the least liked bull markets that we've been in in a long time. And you just look at that chart and you realize there are a lot of people that are still doubters. Well, what does predict a uh, recession and thus a bear market, Carlton? You've, you've been living and breathing these numbers. for Yeah. Sure. And the, one of the great reasons that I think that this slide is really indicative is that uh, effectively you never have a bear market without a recession. And you can see in the gray bars here, periods of time of recession. I think one joke that you and I have kind of laughed about is that even eight of the last five recessions have predicted bear markets. So even though you would get a recession, that also doesn't mean you're going to get a bear market. But you pretty much need the leading indicators to actually be falling or basically the economy rolling over in order to have the preconditions for a recession and the preconditions for a bear market. Indeed, you can see by the charts here, we are not anywhere near LEI, leading economic indicator, uh, demonstrating that we've got some kind of a decline in the in the overall economy. And thus, we seem to still be in the midst of the bull market preconditions. Well, of course, one of the interesting facts is that uh, the S&P 500 price action is part of the leading indicators. So if the S&P is making new highs, it makes it harder for leading indicators to move down. 
I will say there's one exception, 1987 bear market over extremely quickly, two days in October, uh, down 25%, but uh, no recession preceding that. Lots of different uh, explanations. Barron's was full of them, CNBC all week. Um, uh, there's always the outlier, but uh, th most of the recessions since 1960, other than 1987, most of the bear markets were preceded by an economic downturn. So what does drive the market? Well, we've been saying for six months, this is an earnings driven bull market. People who are focusing on what's known as the Trump trade or maybe the Trump trade, uh, we're missing out on something. Global expansion economically, earnings up in Europe, in China, in Japan, and in the US. So you've got to ignore the headlines. Here's one headline, caution signals are blinking for the Trump bull market. That came on March 31st of 2017, and we all know what's happened subsequent to that. Also, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who shares a sentiment similar to that, that uh, Carlton just um, shared with us. Uh, Paul Tudor Jones used to say, when everybody's um, on the wrong side of the boat, you can expect that the market's going to go the other way. And even Paul Tudor Jones has been bearish here all through the spring of 2017 into the summer. So you've got a lot of market pros, Paul Tudor Jones, Jeff Gunlack, brilliant bond guy. He should probably stay away from making equity pre uh, predictions because he's been bearish for two years. Carl Icahn, uh, all these people have been bearish. Bill Gross from PIMCO. So what's the market done? New highs in both large and small caps. So the market direction is absolutely critical. Trend of corporate earnings, uh, we're now at the start of third quarter earnings season. Uh, they're gonna be great. Every indication is that the expectations are gonna be exceeded both on the top and bottom line, and that's really critical. So when you're in a bull market with rising earnings, how do you maximize client profits? Zero in on sector and industry group strength. This is where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. And then for those of you who build active stock portfolios, stock selection, absolutely critical. Now, if we haven't convinced you that there's no bear market, here's a wonderful, cheap way to protect a client portfolio from a 5% decline between now and December 1st. This is known as a vertical put spread in the SPY. It's extremely liquid. For $199, you can protect a client portfolio from a 5% decline between now and December 1st. You buy the 256 S&P put that close, uh, expires on December 1. You sell the 243 put against it. Vertical spreads are a very, very cost-effective way to accomplish what you want. If you get a 5% decline, 553% <clears throat> profit, so it's a good speculative trade, but you're basically for $1,999, you can protect $250,000 worth of your client's equity portfolio. Notice if you did the put option, you're paying about 35% more for that, and you don't have as much profit potential. Outright purchase of puts, not as attractive on a risk reward basis. Typically, if you're gonna get a three to 5% decline on a MAVER average, then the vertical put spread. So for those 10% of you who are bearish, here's how you protect your client portfolios. Now we've covered a lot of ground here. Economic indicators, earnings, technicals, it all adds up to an awful lot of information that we have to process every day. And the biggest problem that we have as investors, as advisors, is information overload. It was really the basis for founding Chaikin Analytics. And Carlton, I know this slide is near and dear to your heart. It, so it really is, Mark, because uh, you talk about information overload. Uh, over the years, I can't tell you how many analyst research reports I've read, whether it's my own analyst work or Wall Street research. I've probably looked at hundreds of spreadsheets, uh, maybe even thousands, analyzed data. And I can tell you that there's no doubt in my mind that the check and power gauge cuts through the clutter and identifies stocks that are poised for outperformance. Um, basically, the power gauge does the work for you. It looks through the financials, the earnings, the technicals and the expert opinions that help uh, advisors, help investors in general look for names 
to identify for your portfolio. It's uh, a simple but very powerful tool that I've used in my own portfolio now. And frankly, as you met, mentioned up above here, it cuts through the clutter. Well, interestingly, we don't rig these things. This slide has been pretty static since March. We're using LAM Research as an example. It was 127.80 in March when we took this screenshot for another webinar that we did. And uh, we'll see in a couple of minutes, it's, it's trading above 175. So um, a very, very powerful move in a stock that we just picked because it looked so good back in March. Now, our solution to the information overload problem is Chaikin Analytics. At the heart of Chaikin Analytics is the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. So we're going to spend about 10 minutes looking at the Chaikin Power Gauge rating and the performance because every other example in the webinar keys off the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. So the more you understand about the Power Gauge, the more you start believing in it, the better you're going to be able to take away the important points from this webinar. Uh, before we get to that, we've been blessed by some media recognition, Forbes, Barron's, CNBC, also some very um, impressive uh, analysts like John Malden at Malden Economics, and then some of our old clients, Paulson Hedge Funds, Soros Fund Management, and Fidelity from back in the in the early 90s have come back and are using the same tool that we're offering to financial advisors and high net worth individuals. So basically, Chaikin Analytics improves portfolio returns by giving you a directional edge. It's particularly important to have that edge during earnings season, and we do it by combining fundamentals with technicals into a multi-factor quantitative model. And then for active portfolio managers, and we know there are a number of you in the room, in fact, uh, I'd like to get a feel for how many of you are still building active stock portfolios. Please type a big A in the question box uh, if you're using individual stocks and building active stock portfolios. Because for you, we have buy and sell signals, which are really critical for uh, more timely exits and entries. And Josh, I'll just ask you how many A's you're seeing there. And just to follow up on that, Mark, I really think that I've used the buy and sell signals for entry points. You know, even investors like to get the best price that uh, they can on any stock. So if all the fundamentals line up, as you point, and the technicals are giving you an opportunity to get into the stock, as we'll see in some of the examples that you show in the webinar here, that's what this is all about. The buy seg sell signals, while they're great for traders, really can work for anybody. And we got about a little over half a dozen coming in, Mark, now. Okay, so uh, I'd say about 20% of our audience this afternoon are active stock um, uh, portfolio managers. So for you, this pyramid defines the successful uh, methodology that we've been preaching at Chaikin Analytics for the last four years. It starts with the power gauge, which is our fundamental indicator. We also look at industry group and sector strength to try and go where the flow is going. And then at the bottom of the pyramid, two technical indicators, Chaikin money flow and Chaikin relative strength. And in the middle, Chaikin buy and sell signals, uh, as Carlton said, timely entries never hurt. So we'd like to show you two patterns, classic Chaikin bull and classic Chaikin bear, because they are really the poster child for what we do well at Chaikin. Classic Chaikin bull starts with the power gauge rating being bullish, indicating that the fundamentals, this multi-factor model are lined up favorably. We also like to see a stock that's outperforming the market where Chaikin money flow is strong, telling us that the institutions are accumulating the stock and this has been our poster child for over 10 months. Applied and, and, materials. It, and it's totally fair, Mark, because I bought the stock back in January in my own portfolio, basically back when that first buy signal shot up right there. Um, there was a little bit of a pullback in the stock. The stock still had been very strong against the market. As you put down below, the market agrees with the model and the Chaikin power gauge was bullish, very bullish as a matter of fact. So you're getting antsy in this one, uh, Carlton? 
I'll tell you, it looks extended. I mean, look at the way it is. It's, it seems very overbought. But on the other hand, what's making me feel pretty good about it is that the check and money flow is still very positive in the name. So if you've got money flow and you've got positive momentum against the market, it's very hard to think about getting out of this name. It wouldn't surprise me if it sees a pullback. But I would say that unless the financials or some of the other aspects of the stock change, we've seen earnings surprise after earnings surprise after earnings surprise. And as you've taught me, earnings surprises come in bunches. I saw that in my whole career. And a name like this still looks compelling, even if it's stretched at the moment. Now, we are going to get some uh, clue as to where applied materials may be going. We had an earnings report from Micron a month ago, a chip manufacturer, uh, huge positive earnings surprise, almost immediately applied materials and LAM research, which both make semiconductor equipment, manufacturing equipment, took off ahead of the earnings. Now, LAM reports tonight, uh, but AMAT doesn't report till November 16th. In both those stocks, analysts are looking for a positive earnings surprise, but all the information you need to analyze this or any other of the 5,000 stocks we follow is right on this chart. Power gauge rating is at the bottom. It's your directional edge. It's been green for almost a year or 15 months, really, on AMAT. Relative strength to the market is positive. That's good. If your fundamental research is not validated by the market, at best, you've got stale money, and at worst, you're um, in the wrong direction. So then we look at shake and money flow the buy and sell signals. And finally, as Carlton noted, we color code the earnings quarters so that you can immediately see whether a company has been uh, beating or disappointing Wall Street. So everything you need to know about this stock is right on the chart. In the upper right, we summarize the technical trend. It's strong and so is the industry group. Couldn't get any better. And of course, someone once said, you know, when everything looks perfect, then maybe that's the time to exit the party. But um, we'll see what happens with Lamb tonight. Now, we have the ability in Chaken to screen for patterns. So in this case, that classic bull pattern uh, was something I screened for in preparation for a webinar that I gave on May 24th. I used the Russell 3000, look for power gauge ratings that were very bullish in the large and mid cap space. Screen for money flow and relative stress. So there's our classic bull. And then I added one other factor. I wanted the earnings surprise factor to be strong. I was looking for stocks with a history of positive earnings surprises. So on that day, only 13 stocks qualified. Subsequent to then, the S&P 500 is up 4%. And these 13 stocks on average up 18%. 11 up, one down, one unchanged. And we've repeated these screens over and over again for webinars. This one is just so dramatic and the holding period is, is nice and long. We're talking about almost five months. I wanted to feature that. Now, classic shake and bears, this is really important. Whether you're bullish or bearish, we all know that stocks have their own particular price patterns. Industry groups particularly uh, contribute to that. So what is a classic shake and bear? Power gauge is bearish. So the fundamentals are negative, stock is underperforming the market, and check and money flow is red, not green, indicating that the stock is being distributed. Institutions are selling it. So here's Under Armour. Power gauge rating turned bearish off the charts, meaning before the beginning of this chart in October of 16 at $40. Under Armour was absolutely loved by the institutions, was loved by the hedge funds. Obviously, something changed a history and a series of negative earnings surprises. That's what these gaps are all about. Institutions got the message pretty early. They started selling the stock. So you had everything lined up. Bearish power gauge rating, underperforming the market, institutional selling, negative earnings surprises. So what do you want to do? Look for the signals. This is what we call our relative strength sell signal. All these signals are on our website, whether you're a visitor or a subscriber, we tell you what these six signals are made up of. So in this case, very simple. Stock that's underperforming the market moves above its 21-day average and drops back below. Tells you that the little bit of a rally, whether it's short covering or wishful thinking is over, and that's typically a great time to sell the stock. And here we have Under Armour making new 52-week lows in spite of all sorts of calls on CNBC to bottom fish in the stock.
We used to call it a dead cat bounce, Mark. Yeah, Sandy's not going to like that. My, <laughs> my animal well, rescue apologize. wife. I've, I've used that before, and I've been chastised, so I can't do it anymore. Well, but you yes. can blame me then. Uh, dead cat bounce it is. Um, but uh, this stock does not have nine lives, by the way. And I've Clearly famous, not. You know, I famously said that bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America, and I'll stick to that one. It's never too late to sell a stock where everything is lined up against it. And this is proof positive. So the Chaikin power gauge rating, which we've started looking at, is a very simple display, but very powerful because there's a lot of number crunching going on under the hood. I like to say that the power gauge is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And it can be your GPS during earnings season. Very powerful guide to walking through that minefield, which is earnings season. So uh, John Malden, who's one of our partners, and uh, I don't think he'd mind me telling you that he's the bearish partner we have. He takes pride in his contrary view or looking ahead uh, you know, to the Fed unwinding and global economic um, quantitative easing uh, ending. But uh, still in all, John, has given us a great endorsement. He's impressed by what Mark has done with the power gauge, and they use it as their um, process for vetting and evaluating p potential due diligence. They use the power gauge in their routine due diligence on individual stocks. So what did John see in the power gauge that got him so excited? As I said earlier, the power gauge has four primary factors, and within each of those value, growth, technicals, and sentiment, we have five individual factors. And Carlton, I know you've been talking to advisors uh, as you've been on the road. Why don't you uh, sort of give us your own unique take on these factors? Yeah. When I kind of started doing my own work and looking at what you'd built here, Mark, I obviously was very impressed because I agree with you. The, the four primary factors that you have there, value, growth, technicals, and sentiment, ultimately do drive stock prices. These are the very things that institutional investors look at when they are making uh, investment decisions for their own portfolio, whether they have a value bias or a growth bias. We know we've been in a big value uh, growth market, which has kind of left value a little bit uh, down and out. But I've always be believed um, that free cash flow, which is one of the largest uh, parts of your value metrics, um, is a great measure of the health of the company. It's basically what Warren Buffett uses as his primary metric, and you know I'm a big fan of Buffett. Um, but while all the financial metrics have value, and I might gravitate toward free cash flow, uh, all of the metrics make sense. All of the factors are important, and it's even better that there are growth and sentiment factors involved. Yeah, this is really an eclectic model, and it's worked for seven years since it was locked down uh, in terms of the factors and the weights in September of 2010, because it's based on how Wall Street worded. It's not a model that was developed by an academic or a newly minted PhD from MIT. This is a reality-based model based on 35 years of working with institutional investors, learning what they looked at before they made investment decisions so I could sell them my technical analysis product. Now this goes way beyond technical analysis. This is, as I said earlier, the culmination of my life's work. It pulls together everything I learned at Tucker Anthony, Drexel Burnham, Shearson Hamill, and in my own research. So I'm really proud of this, but I'm proud of the fact that advisors are using this and you'll see one of the best testimonials that we've ever gotten at the end of the webinar. And please try and stay with us because we've got a very special offer for you at the end of the webinar. But some of the um, boxed factors here, earning surprise we've already looked at, cause analysts to raise and lower their estimates. So that gives you the short-term momentum because analyst estimate revisions are the single biggest driver of short-term price movements. Combine that with the value metrics, which are the bedrock of the model. You have an eclectic model. And then in sentiments, some factors that you don't see in typical multi-factor models, industry group, relative strength, insider buying, short interest. These are factors that are unique to Chaikin and this 20-factor model. So let's take a look at the performance. 2016, the very bullish stocks up 32% in the Russell 3000. Very bearish stocks up only 9.5%. That's a big spread. If you can avoid the very bearish stocks and focus on the very bullish stocks, 
or focused on ETFs that have a preponderance of very bullish stocks. And we're going to mention one in a few minutes that does. You're ahead of the game. Now, in 2015, Power Gauge really helped people out. This gives you a sort of advanced look of how the power gauge is going to help you in a bear market because in 2015, as you know, energy stocks were in a bear market and small caps in general were in a bear market. So the very bearish stocks in the Russell 3000 down 17% when the Russell itself was basically flat as was the S&P because the Russell is a cap weighted index as is the S&P 500. So if you could have avoided those very bearish stocks and Under Armour is a, a sort of poster child for how you do that, avoided ETFs, whether they were sector or broader based that had a preponderance of bearer stocks, your clients are ahead of the game. Now, we've partnered with two very um, impressive organizations, NASDAQ and New York Life, the largest uh, mutual insurance company in America and their Index IQ uh, and Mainstay Investments subsidiary. And in April of 2014 launched three NASDAQ Chaikin indices based on their large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. And the results have been spectacular. Over the three years that these indexes, which are rebalanced just once a year, so we don't get the advantage of those buy and sell signals, all three, and this is through March 6th, so just about a week ago, have significantly outperformed their benchmark. Large cap by almost a thousand basis points. Small cap, 2,100 basis point, dividend achiever, 1,600. And Carlton, I know you're just itching to tell people what uh, came out of this uh, wonderful uh, performance track record. Yeah, well, this is real-time track record, Mark. That's what uh, really impresses me. Uh, the NASDAQ chicken indexes were all launched on April 1st of 2014, so they're roughly three and a half years old. And as you suggested, they've been rebalanced and reconstituted three times, which means they've been alive for, you know, three and a half years for, for unique iterations. And you're getting this kind of performance on a live basis. So it kind of corroborates that stair-step performance that you showed for both 2015 and 2016, where the very bullish stocks uh, drastically outperformed the very bearish and for that matter, any other bucket of stocks. So this is a real, real time performance. Uh, it's uh, live and it's a track record that NASDAQ um, and Chaikin have together. And uh, the goal of launching these indices was for an ETF creator to license them. And that happened in February of 17 when uh, Index IQ, which is part of uh, New York Life's investment management subsidiary, licensed all three, registered them with the SEC. And the first exchange traded fund based on these indices was launched on May 16th, uh, the NASDAQ Chaikin small cap ETF. CSML is a symbol. This is not meant as a recommendation to buy it, just uh, further validation. And it's uh, been outperforming the Russell 2000 uh, subsequent to its launch with a particular uh, thrust starting in September. So between September uh, 1st and now up about 14%. Validating the power gauge rating. A stock with a bearish rating cannot make it into any of these indices because of the rules that are cast in stone. So that's the validation. Now let's get on to some really significant examples. There are three key indicators that we've talked about and based on them, three important takeaways that we'd like you to leave the webinar with. First one we call the dynamic duo. Second is a concept that's so important to keeping your profits and being on the right side of the market, spotting personality changes in individual stocks and ETFs. And then stealth accumulation and distribution, persistent buying or selling by institutions. So the dynamic duo we've already looked at. Chaikin power gauge rating is the fundamental piece. Chaikin relative strength is the technical piece. And that dynamic duo, when the market agrees with the model, helps find big winners and losers. One exception, relative strength stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. Those are the momentum stocks that rally without fundamental underpinnings. When something goes wrong, you're on a high wire without a safety net. I've been cautioning people about Tesla for the last three years for that reason. Uh, you could almost say that Netflix is in that situation, but nobody's gonna convince investors in Netflix to leave that party right now because the um, 
that new subscriber count was just a, a blowout last night. But still, they're going to earn only about a dollar a share t selling at 200. You do the math. How comfortable are you paying 200 times earnings for a fast growing streaming video company? Bottom line is, if fundamentals support the technicals, you're on very solid ground. But relative strength can drive prices to big, big extremes. Second concept is spotting personality changes. And we define a personality change as a stock that's been outperforming the market. So the relative strength is green that begins to underperform the market or vice versa. And here's an example of a bullish personality change in a biotech stock that had great underlying fundamentals, but was in a downtrend for almost eight months. When it broke out of that downtrend here in late June, it then started outperforming the market. That's a bullish personality change and the power gauge was also bullish. So after that, you're looking for low risk entry points, a pullback to the 21 day average. After a big earnings surprise to the upside, we get an oversold buy signal. Again, these are all explained on our website. Beautiful entry point at 72 on the way to 86, another one over here. So the key takeaway here is you may have been lulled into false complacency on Gilead, which is one of my four favorite biotech stocks, Amgen, Biogen, Celgene, and Gilead. I call them the four horsemen of the biotech, the large cap biotechs. But Gilead changed character and you've got to spot that. Now on the downside, we have what we call a bearish personality change. And that's perhaps more important because if you don't spot the bullish change, you're missing out on opportunity. But if you don't spot the bearish personality change, then you're putting clients assets at risk. So here's Tesaro, a drug company, bearish personality change back in March with the stock around 150. Stock has gone nowhere, 150 to 120 in a period when biotechs are making new highs and the market is making new highs. So avoid these stocks, bottom fish at your peril and follow those signals to get out of these positions on a timely basis. Now, we talked about buy and sell signals, six pairs. They're all filtered by either the power gauge or relative strength. So that puts a little bit of the wind at your back. And we also have the ability to find them. So for a webinar I did on August 10th, in a list of stocks that I monitor called My Stocks, a series of buy and sell signals. I have about 180 stocks in my list. So there were about 15 signals that day and Boeing had given an oversold buy at 234 and Best Buy relative strength sell signal at $30. Here's how they worked out. The Boeing signal came at a time when a lot of people would have had a hard time entering the stock. It had just had a very positive earnings surprise, big spike up, and then it really pulled back sideways, it pulled back from 240 to 235 Got the buy signal, follow the signals. It's a discipline, better than trading on your emotions. And you get a nice move up to 262. Now on the downside, Bed Bath & Beyond gave that signal at 29.74. It had been preceded by lots of relative strength sell signals. Look at the institution selling this big box retailer. And by the way, even when Bed Bath & Beyond reports better than expected numbers, historically it's sold off. So here you have a stock with negative earnings surprises. This is where that sell signal came in. Stock dropped to 26 from 30, rallied again right before the earnings. This is a pattern that happens over and over. So the message here is, since the webinar is about how to navigate earnings season, don't necessarily follow price activity and assume that it's gonna continue after earnings come out because there's a lot of wishful thinking and in weak stocks, short covering on Wall Street. And that's Apparently what you had here in Bed Bath & Beyond, you got another relative strength sell signal with the stock around 28. And here we are making new 52 week lows, the stock down again today to 21 with the market at new 52 week highs. You wanna avoid these stocks and retail in general has been awful. The only hope that was propping up retail recently was Nordstrom's ability to go private and they couldn't get the financing and Carlton, they, I think you have a comment here. 
Well, I know that uh, there's always a bear market lurking somewhere in the market. And I know we'll go over a little bit on industry and sector specific stuff. But the point being that even though, as you mentioned, we're making new highs, there are groups and there are industries that are still very weak. And part of the challenge of any investment strategy is you have to know, you have to have rules and you have to have a process and you have to have something that's going to work over time. And that's why I've really enjoyed utilizing Chaken Analytics and figuring out, um, as you say, looking for the personality changes and looking for those names and those groups where you've seen um, bear markets already lurking in the background. Well, let's look at how to use group and sector ETFs to find big winners. So first we're gonna look at the power bars, which is our unique way of determining which groups and, and, and sectors are likely to outperform or underperform. And research from a variety of people like Investors Business Daily, Bill O'Neill, um, Standard & Poor's, Zach's Investment Research has shown that strong stocks and strong industry groups give you a tailwind on the long side. But if you're investing in weak stocks, in weak industry groups or sectors, uh, you have a hard time making money on the long side. These are much better utilized as short vehicles or stocks to avoid. So here is a blow up of our power bar display in Shaken Analytics for the 10 select spider sector ETFs. Right at the top financials, 31 stocks with bullish power gauge ratings, one stock with a bearish rating, technology, been strong. These, these two have been leading the market along with industrials and materials. And at the bottom, energy, just one bullish stock, seven bearish. It's improving. There used to be about 24 bearish stocks, but even with the big rally in crude oil prices, energy stocks really haven't uh, changed in terms of the power gauge rating. So let's look at technology. So this is the XLK, the Select Spider Technology ETF. We see two things here. A, outperforming the market since January, there was a blip right after the election where the, the uh, Trump trade stocks, industrials and financials, and small caps did well. But then technology reasserted itself in January and you've had a huge up move in the broad-based ETF. Along the side are the strongest stocks in the group. We've already looked at AMAT. We're gonna look at LAM in a minute and uh, Facebook down at the bottom, but look at the money flow. People have been buying the XLK technology ETF to get broad-based exposure to large cap technology stocks without exposing themselves to single stock risk. And so anytime you got a dip down to some sort of support level or an oversold in our work, you wanna be buying technology. Now we, are active stock pickers in addition to creating those passive indices. So we're gonna be looking for the best stocks like Facebook or LAM Research or AMAT, but it's perfectly fine to be buying the ETF. So here's LAM Research, very similar chart to AMAT, relative strength buy signals back here at 100 last November, then again at 140, 150, on the way to 192, I, I under spoke there earlier, 128 to 192 since that March chart was made over here. And money flow is still coming into it. Now they report after the close tonight, we put that right up on the chart. Reports Tuesday, October 17th, the, the moon is um, reflective of after the close and our earnings surprise indicator is suggesting a positive earnings surprise. Now they've had a history of that, but look what happened in July when they reported a positive earnings surprise. Stock sold off. People took profits and we've got to have a keen eye to see if that pattern repeats itself. It happened in the financials, although that's already reversed after just two or three days of selling, JP Morgan and Citicorp, as we'll see in a minute. Really important to see whether LAM Research reports better than expected earnings and holds the gain. If it spikes up tomorrow morning and the sellers come in as, as they did in July, then you've got to think that if that decline isn't immediately reversed, this may happen to some of the other tech stocks in earnings season. Now, Facebook is a stock that um, I recommended as my bullish stock of the week in Market Insights here uh, 
week and a half ago at 170. Now there's a buy signal back here at 161, and I'll show you in a minute why I didn't make it a buy back then because I had a better candidate. But this is the time of the year when Facebook typically does extremely well. They report earnings on November 1st. There's probably nothing between now and November 1st that's gonna derail this stock. So I was looking when I recommended it at 170 uh, for significant new highs, perhaps to the 190 area in anticipation of that November 1st earnings report already up to 176 today. So after we look at sectors, we look at industry groups. On the left, very bullish groups based on the power bar. Banks, major, they're in the financial sector, so that makes sense. Aerospace defense, 25 bullish, one bearish, and construction and building services, just to single out three of the top 10. And on the right, bearish industry groups, primary concentration is energy and consumer staples. So soaps and cosmetics, miscellaneous consumer staples, they haven't been the place to be and we'll show you some examples. So in my weekly market commentary, market insights, we end by showing you three strong and three weak industry groups, and then the three stocks within those groups that look the best. On September 10th, strongest industry groups, computer services and software, there's Facebook at 170, electric utilities, and aerospace defense. Notice a stock called Aerojet Rocket Dynamics 2854 because we're going to zero in on that. A couple of days after that, Northrop Grumman made a bid for Orbital ATK. The stock market is fixated on rocket stocks. I don't know if it's because of Elon Musk or people going back to their childhood, but rocket yeah, It stocks. certainly can't be North Korea. No, that's for sure. <laughs> rocket man. But uh, Rocket stocks have been skyrocketing. And so we had had a buy signal on Orbital ATK, and two days later, Northrop Grumman made a bid. Stock went from 105 to 132. But there's Aerojet, AJRD. We had had that buy signal, featured it on September 10th as a strong stock in a strong industry group. You could have gotten in at 2864 on the way to 36. Really powerful gain. You got another entry point here with an oversold buy. The discipline of looking for strong stocks and strong industry groups that are under accumulation and outperforming the market has worked for 40, 50 years that I've been in the market. Now, construction and building services, also very strong. This is the stock I recommended instead of Facebook. D.R. Horton making single family homes. Millennials are now moving out of their parents' basements, buying homes, there's not a lot of supply out there. So companies like DR Horton are providing that. And I recommended this at 36.90. The stock went to 42. So that's about an 18% gain. Same time, Facebook was up about 8%. So I'm not disappointed that I didn't recommend for Facebook a little earlier because we gave clients an insight into the fact that this stock looked extremely attractive. But And you can even see what eight, nine months ago, Mark, that the, uh, the stock had an oversold buy right there and a personality change. So this has been a great stock, a great example also of the personality change and the consistency of earning surprises to the upside that has continued in the name as well. And people have been focusing for the last three months on sort of soft housing start numbers. Forget the news headlines, look at the indicators, look at the earnings pattern, it'll serve you well. And the trend is your friend, right, Mark? Yeah, sure looks like it. I know my wife Sandy is in the stock and she was thinking of getting out of it yesterday because it was overextended and she's had a big run. So uh, I'll have to find out after the webinar whether she took her profits. Sometimes she stays through these little pullbacks. Sometimes she uh, sells half and is very happy with uh, you know, what she's accomplished. So good defense leads to good offense. And we get the question all the time, will Chaikin help me in a bear market? And this happens to be an idealized way that stocks move down, developed by Richard Wyckoff 93 years ago. And nothing has changed in the markets because the markets are based on human nature and human nature hasn't changed. 
So my answer is Chaikin will definitely help you in a bear market because it helped you sidestep energy in the middle of a bull market in 2014. Notice the bearish personality change in the XLE, the large cap select spider energy ETF proceeded to drop from 100 down to 50 at the low in February of 16, a year and a half later, 50% drop. Stock started falling off a cliff. One stock that advisors were very drawn to because everybody was looking for yield back in 2014, 15 was Kinder Morgan rolling up their MLPs into the master company. Somehow the story enabled the stock to persist into the spring of 2015 with the stock at 40, the power gauge turned bearish, bearish personality change, institutional selling, signals to help you get out and the stock bottomed out at $10. So 40 down to 10, 42 really, 80% drop in the stock before it finally bottomed out. You need to sidestep these to protect client assets, whether it's the energy ETF in the sector or individual names with high dividend yields, nothing protects you against an 80% decline. And it happened again in a much more corrective way. In late January, bearish personality change in the XLE. This is January of 16. That was a five-year chart before. And the XLE has dropped 15% to that low in late August with sell signals along the way. So when that happens, I look for stocks like Schlumberger. Sell signals, institutions liquidating, underperforming the market, bearish power gauge rating, lovely sell signal right ahead of a bearish earnings surprise. Schlumberger reports on Friday. Likelihood is disappointing earnings. Has it bottomed out? I don't know, but at least you're aware that this is a weak stock and a weak industry group heading into this Friday's earnings report. So you're prepared for what's coming. Yeah, you're certainly not getting an oversold buy on this one here, Mark. It's just an overbought sell that keeps showing up. And that's because the power gauge is bearish uh, or, or not bullish. So that's the benefit of having this sort of multiple system work. That's right. The fundamentals are going to drive stock prices ultimately. Yeah, and that's really what we believe in. Fundamentals drive the market. Technicals monitor the patterns. And the combination of the two is really powerful. So let's end the webinar by showing you how to navigate earnings season. Volatile time, you've got to be better prepared for company reports, stocks like Lamb Research, Schlumberger, when they come out, you want to be aware of them. Know if some degree of reliability of a stock will meet, beat, or disappoint Wall Street estimates. So a couple of examples. Back in April, we were waiting for earnings in my market insights. I identified the auto parts group as weak. Three stocks, Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, and O'Reilly, all with weak power gauge, relative strength, and money flow. So we said to sell these stocks on strength. They had been making new 52-week lows. Advanced Auto Parts rallied, gave us a sell signal right ahead of that bearish earnings surprise. The stock was 150, dropped in a straight line to 100, and then continued all the way down after a second bearish earnings surprise to 85, 83. Now, along the way, um, Raymond James, just about two weeks ago, because this chart's about a week old, and I don't want to lose this story, downgraded advanced auto parts, AAP, from strong buy to market perform after the stock dropped from 170 down to 90. Now, this isn't a knock on Raymond James. They have great research, and I know there are a number of Raymond James advisors on, on the webinar today. Could have just as easily been Merrill Lynch or Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs. You need an independent lens to monitor your research through. Power Gauge does that for you. And Advanced Auto Parts subsequently made a new low two days ago at 87 and a half. So wouldn't you have loved to sidestep this for your clients, knowing that the industry group was also a place to avoid. Now, Seagate's a really interesting stock. Tech sector's been strong. You had a bearish personality change, bearish power gauge. And then right before the previous earnings report, you had an overbought sell signal. And then you had a negative earnings surprise. And guess what? You've got another Seagate earnings report coming out on Monday. 
I mean, the amazing thing to me, Mark, is here you have an earning estimate trend going down. You've got shorts piling in on the stock, yet what you have is the analyst rating trend still on the bullish end. In other words, analysts haven't cut their ratings yet. Um, as you noted before, Raymond James cutting uh, advanced auto where they did, it wouldn't surprise me if we get a bad earnings report here that we would see analyst uh, ratings start to go down that uh, would match the estimate trend that we've seen in the stock. And I've seen this for years. When I started out at Shearson Hamill, bear market, the analysts stuck to their guns. They put their feet in cement. They don't notice the personality change because most of them aren't looking at technicals. The good ones do. And when do they lower their estimates? Right near the bottom. This happened to be in 1969-70. It's why I turned to technical analysis when I was in your seat, Series 7 registered. The only way I could protect client assets and build my book was to use technicals in conjunction with fundamentals. So Citigroup, as we've mentioned, had a bullish power gauge rating. It's had a very good run. And then they reported better than expected earnings on Thursday last week. The stock had opened Friday on a big spike up and profit takers came in. They started picking apart the uh, earnings report, saw loan growth diminishing, and you had a basically three-day sell-off in the stock. These sell-offs typically last two to four days. If it's a bad report, they can last even longer. But here they beat estimates by 10 cents. So I made this my bullish stock of the week on Sunday and we've now started to see the stock rebound. And this is an example of why you need to be prepared for earnings season. Knowing that the stock was due to report, you watch the price action, you get a buying opportunity like this. Michael Mayo, who many of you may know, is the um, highly respected bank analyst at Wells Fargo. He's got a $90 price target on Citicorp. I'm always wary of price targets, but from 70 to 90 is a lot of opportunity. And following the disciplines we've talked about in this webinar, you could have found that opportunity. So I'm gonna end the webinar with the newest innovation at Chaikin Analytics. Because of that, we won the Benziga FinTech Award for Best Ideas Platform back in May against 19 other contestants in that category. And it's something we call our stock discovery engine. It's a great way to find swaps, to find the stocks that are similar to a stock that you have a strong opinion on. And it uses similar technology to the way Spotify finds your music or Netflix finds your film. And I guess Amazon finds us everything else in life. It's called relevance-based discovery engine. Most important point of relevance is the power gauge, then the industry group, then the market cap, and then the various fundamental and technical patterns. So on July 23rd, I had put out a sell signal on Starbucks bearish stock of the week due to report earnings. It dropped from 58 to 52, but I seeded the discovery engine with Starbucks and I instantly got back other fast food stocks like Chipotle, Jack in the Box, Cracker Barrel, Dunkin' Donuts with bearish ratings. So I zeroed it on Chipotle because the power gauge had initially turned bearish at 700. It was trading at 396. But I also took note of the swap into QSR. Now, I didn't know what QSR was. So when I drilled down and shake and I found out that this is a combination of Burger King and the Horton of a fast food chain out of Canada. So a very highly respected suite of fast food brands. So let's see what those stocks did. Chipotle, that indication came at this arrow over here. It had given us one of our money flow patterns that we haven't really gotten into here. Money flow stayed negative when the stock made a new high. We've been teaching institutions that pattern for over 35 years. We call it a bearish money flow sell alert. It happened on advanced auto parts. But here it was at 396, breaking down with incredible selling pressure because uh, their problems are not over, sadly, with the um, E. coli bacteria. Bearish personality change after that, that big momentum run up bearish power gauge, you drop from 396 all the way down to 298. QSR, on the other hand, went from $60 up to 68. So one of them was going down 100 points and the other was going up 15%. Swap out of 
Chipotle into QSR, which has a profile that looks more like Jack in the Box. And you switch from strong to weak, you book the tax, from weak to strong, you can book the tax loss if you were unfortunate enough to be in Chipotle at a higher price. So a little bit of tax harvesting, switching into a stock with all that bullish potential. So Chaken Analytics can be used for tax harvesting, but it's much better than just finding a, you know, a match for the stock because it's got to have a bullish power gauge rating and match up positively to qualify in that search engine for a swap. So we've covered the five keys to making money during earnings season. And all of this is embodied in Chaken Analytics, which is a proven stock selection system, incorporating our 20-factor model, our stock discovery engine, to generate new ideas, the screener that you've seen, the options ideas from options play. And here's that special offer. Chaken Analytics is normally $2,195 for an annual subscription. Chakenanalytics.com slash earnings. But as a webinar special, we'd like to offer you a $400 discount, a reduced price down to $1,795. And this offer expires on October 20th, chickenanalytics.com slash earnings. Now, in addition, you get our intraday charts, our earnings detail and alerts, and my weekly market insights, which we've um, alluded to during the webinar. Now, I said earlier that we've got the, the mother of all endorsements here. I met with a Citigroup wealth management team as I was going around with the main state wholesalers talking about the NASDAQ Chaken indices and our small cap ETF. And we met with a team that told me that they had more than doubled their assets under management in the three years they've been using Chaken Analytics. They said in our weekly Monday morning portfolio review, we use Chaken Analytics to evaluate our equity holdings. We've more than doubled our AUM to over $2 billion in the three years since we first subscribed to Chaken. The power gauge has kept us out of trouble while confirming our core research. And this is a Citigroup wealth management team in New York City. This is the benefit of using Chaken Analytics. Plus, as a subscriber, small group tutorials, unlimited coaching and support if you need it, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and my colleague John Schlitz's morning insights. One final inducement, what we call a fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with either Carlton or myself. In addition to that discounted price, $17.95, $400 off the cost of Chaken Analytics. So I know Josh is putting up the link, chickenanalytics.com slash earnings. We'd love to see you become part of our advisor community. Uh, we work very closely with advisors. Our customer support team is populated by people who've worked with advisors. One of them was a former FA at Merrill Lynch, and we'd love to have you on board. So thank you very much to Carlton and uh, to Josh. I'm gonna turn it back to you to wind down the webinar. Thank you, Mark uh, and Carlton. And thank you everybody for joining us today. To take advantage of Mark's offer, uh, there is a link in the Zoom webinar chat. You can go directly to chickenanalytics.com backslash earnings or give us a call at 877-697-6783. Again, that number is 877-697-6783. And you can also subscribe right away with the offer at chickenanalytics.com slash earnings.